Hello everyone, Young Buff here, and welcome back to another episode of Paper Mario The Thousand of Doran. Last episode, we got a brand new optional party member, Miss Mouse. I almost said, I almost said uh, Vivian. Miss Mouse, and we also got Vivian. So then we have six party members. That's pretty crazy. But here's the thing: this is gonna start off pretty weird because I'm actually going to be speeding up gameplay and searching for shine sprites because I know it's it's gonna be pretty weird to start an episode like this, but I'm going to end up doing that. So yeah. Weird intro, speeding up gameplay, and I'm gonna start to collect shine sprites. So, yeah, enjoy the music, whatever I play, and, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys after I'm done hunting for shine sprites. Alright, that's all I needed. I just needed one, or no, two shine sprites so I could actually power up Miss Mouse right away. So, now that I've done that, let's go ahead and do that. Power up with Miss Mouse. There we go. Boom, there we go. Perfect. Shabizzy! HP is now 20, and we, we, we didn't even check her moves before. Okay, so she knows Love Slap, Kiss Thief, and Tease. I wait. We can check. Mo oh my god! Wait. Tease makes enemies dizzy. Kiss thief steals an item or badge. And love slap. Well, it's a multi slap, just like what uh, Bow had in Paper Mario One, which I haven't LP'd, but eh, it might happen eventually. Anyway, now let's go on with the actual. Wait a minute! I forgot. I forgot. There's still something to do. Luigi's story. I promised. I'm gonna do it. Yes. It sucks, but I'm gonna do it. Hello. Hello, bro of mine. D yeah, just stand right on the counter. Well, I headed to the Circuit Break Island and I got uh, I got me a marvelous compass piece. You wouldn't believe it, bro. Talk about drills and chills and spills. Ch ch drills, chills, and spills. I, I don't even know. Mamma mia. It was pretty nuts, bro. You want to hear what happened? It's a pretty long story. Hey, sounds good to me. Which part of my story do you want to hear, bro? Circuit Break Island. Like I said, it's a pretty long story, but here it goes. Just as our boat arrived to Circuit Break Island, we heard an incredible racket. We soon found out that they hold car races almost every single day on the island. Whoever takes the first place gets to rule the island as king for that day. Just as we got to the racetrack, or to the racetrack, they were holding the award ceremony. Eh, uh, you know, I couldn't believe my eyes right there on the trophy they give to the winner. It was another piece of the marvelous compass. I almost passed dead away. I decided right there and there, the only thing I would, I was do, the only thing I was to do is to enter the next race. I mean, I've driven car races before. I thought I'd be okay. Boy, was I wrong, though. Eh, uh, you know... The cards, they were supercharged machines that could send you airborne with exhaust, or with their exhaust. These vehicles were armed with missiles and bazookas and anything go- It was anything goes, bro. Of course I wanted to- <laughs> Of course I wanted to get out of there. Pronto! These drivers were crazed! But then I woke but then I worked up my courage and signed up anyway. And my race day finally came. I got the one I got one of the best cards. The big green 1-0. I took my position at the start line. The light went green, I stopped the accelerator, and something bad happened. I was in reverse! The big green 1-0 was rocket went rocketing backwards with me yelling! 
I crashed into the wall behind me. Hard not to cut me off of mid screen. Scream. I swoop, I dropped into the last place and wrecked my racing machine. But it wasn't all bad news. All the other cards crashed because of my maneuver. Once I got in gear and took off, it was the I was the only car left. I won by a country mile, bro. Eh, uh, you know, I took the piece off my trophy and added it to my marvelous compass. The compass came to life and pointed me towards Jazafraz town in the east, eh, uh, you know. But then I heard that voice, Princess Eclair's voice echoed in my ears again. Oh, my princess, random words from the poetry have spoken by your voice. I will most definitely save you. Just wait for me, Princess Eclair. Oh, so sorry about that, bro. Um, so after that, I got back on my boat, and I came back here to Rogueport, and that's what's been up with me. You didn't even mention your party member here. If you want to hear what I've been up to, just come and find me, okay, bro? I'll be around. Yeah, I'm Dorgu, and don't for a second think that this dude's telling the whole story. The only reason why I lent him my rig is because he got down on his knees and begged. And what happens? He's in it for one second before he completely totals it, idiot! I'm not letting this dip out of my sight until he repays the 5,000 coin repair costs. So, uh, damn. Luigi, you have- all of your party members hate you. Literally every single one of Luigi's party members hate him. Okay, now that that's over with, now we can actually go back to the shore and do what, um, frankly told us to do. Yeah, we're just now starting the story- wait, did I get this already? I don't know. I don't know if you, if you heard my notification go off my phone. I should probably mute that, but I'm too lazy. Uh, let's see. Did I... Wait a minute. Wait. Remember we lent that rat our money, and he's still gone! I'm starting to think that was a bad idea to lend him our money, because he's not here. Anyway, um... He's supposed to go to the shores. Anybody know... Ooh! Ooh. Ooh, what's this? Can anyone... What is this? Hey, Toad. See that ship talk there? She belongs to Flavio, the merchant trader. He don't sail too often, but mostly he hangs at Polly's joint in the plaza. Ooh. Just one per- that's all we need to know. Let's talk to this guy as well. Hey. No matter how much I work, life never gets any easier for me. You know what I mean? There's gotta be a way to go poof and get rich. You know, poof! Hmm. Alright. You lucky! That's the ghost island! Don't get mixed up with that place! For your own sake! Apparently I can't even see the toad, but yeah. Anyway, we know that the owner of that ship... Ship? Ship. His name is Flavio, and he's at the pub. We were literally just there. Okay, let's go to the pub and... Talk to the owner of the ship, Vivian. Ooh. Okay, anyway. Where is this Flavio? Are you Flavio? Are you Flavio? Are you Flavio? Hmm. I can't- who would own a brightly colored ship with reds and yellows? I don't know. Hello? And what do you want, eh? Who, me you ask about? Ah, I am called Flavio. I am, how you say, a trader. The richest man in rogue parts. <laughs> Monetary wealth gives me freedom. Yes, and freedom gives me wealth of spirit. And yet, why is that a man whose life is unchained must always long for yet more? Ah! What is missing from my life? This test of my very insides. I must know. What do I lack? Romance, definitely. I'd say emotion. Probably thrills. Money, maybe? Well, he's th he's rich. And rich and money gives him thrills. And judging by his character, he's full of emotion. So I would say... He needs... A girlfriend. Or boyfriend. I don't judge. Ah! Romance, you say, ah? Huh? I suppose someone does need romance in life. What other sweet, delectable fruit could make so many wonderful pasta sauces? Ah, no! Foolish Flavio! Not Romes! N not Romas! You silly man! What I need is romance! Wait, hold the horses! That's it! Now that I'm thinking of it, I once heard of the treasure of Cortez, the Pirate King. Yes, this is the answer. Oh, such happiness for me. A hunt for pirate treasure. Why, that just shrieks of romance and thrills. And emotion, and even money. 
Do you not know of the tale? The Pirate King treasure hidden on Kilal Key? Ah, well, the tale says that the Pirate King Cortez hid his hoard of pirates' booty in there. Oh, for years, treasure hunters and ruffians have gone there in search of the loot. But not a single one of them has ever returned. Oh, the horror makes my back tingle. People there whisper that the ghost of Cortez attacks all who seeks treasure. Eek! It's all because those fairy rumors people no longer go to Kilhalki. But that will not stop Flavio. The treasure is there. Yes, I am going to prove it. For I am Flavio, trader extraordinaire, millionaire, sailor of the seven seas. What is that you are saying? You are also looking for treasure here in Rogueport? Why talk such craziness? There isn't anything like that in this dull armpit of a town. You cannot believe such stupid rumors about treasure in some street unchin spews out. Some street urchin, I mean. No, 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 no! Now what madness comes bursting from your mouth? You have a treasure map? Well, hand it over. Rather, I mean, show me. You are having a joke on me. This map leads straight to Kiel Halki. You swine! You mean to steal my treasure from under me? You awful, awful man! Well, now I'm confused. Are you looking for things on... Well, now I am confused. You are looking for things known as the Crystal Stars? But now that I am thinking, a star-shaped stone was said to be in Cortez's hoard. Perhaps we could sell it for a staggering amount of cash? Yes, that would be. Ah, stop such thoughts, Flavio. What you need is romance. Thrills and emotion. I could not ignore what this business before me suggests. This must be a fate at work. Flavio shall go with you to kill our key. Of course, the crystal star is yours, yes, but the rest of the treasure is mine. Huh? You must repeat that. Flavio's ears are plugged. You have no ship? Ah, 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 ah. You unfortunate foolish man. Do you not know who I am? I will have a ship ready in no time, and that will be massive and glorious. Splendid, splendid, splendid. Let us begin preparations immediately, shall we? I will volunteer myself as the interpreted leader, yes, and you will be captain. Ah, danger adventure, tickle my nostrils. Come to the harbor right away. Okay, Flavio, you are full of energy. Wow, sorry about that cut there, I had to turn the volume down on my computer because I was afraid that it would echo and my mic would uh, pick up what the audio is playing on the computer right now, so yeah, I had to... Oh, wait, 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 save. Okay, so it seems that we're going to be starting the chapter very, very soon. Alrighty. We didn't really do much post stuff, but don't worry, troubles and stuff, I'll do that. Shine Sprite, Star Piece, I'll get all of that by the end of the game, don't worry, I'll get everything there is to get in this game. And if not, if I miss anything, then I'll make a bonus video, no problem at all. Anyway... Okay, let's go here, Captain Toad. There's Captain Toad. But bombs, everything. Hello. Oh, what, what, wow, they're already ready. And, guys, do you see that? And I'm not talking about Long Vivian. Something about you looks really suspicious. Ah, yes, so it is you, huh? Well, sadly, a slight problem seems to have popped up. But feast your eyes on this outrageously fantastic ship. She is a fine vessel, no? She is the SS Flavion, the queen of the countless ships in my personal fleet. The raw majesty of her hull, the pomp and circumstance, none can compare to her. Ah, behold the elegant curve of her prow. She cuts in the very soul, don't you agree? Be she's just not a beaut, she's a savage beast on the water, tops among sailboats. My voice is cracking, oh my god. But above all, I tell you, this proud ship can... Ah, uh, yes? Did you speak? Yes, 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 of course. The problem that has sprung up. I had completely forgotten about it. The SS Flavian, she bewitches me. Yes, uh, well, here's the issue. Uh, we have no navigator. He ran off the dog. The navigator, of course, is the high-ranked helmsman. They steal ships, you know. Now, here is the real problem. The waters around Kilhal Kiel are definitely dangerous. We, we need an absurdly skilled helmsman for our navigator. It is how you say, 
A pickle? Oi, Flavio! Heard you talking there, sir. If you don't mind me saying, I might have a solution. Do not tease me, Papach. You have solved our problem, then spit it out already. Well, sir, I've heard talk of a famed, no, legendary sailor living in Rogueport. Yes, I believe he's called Admiral Bobbery, a salty old sea dog, by all the accounts. But he's said to have the helmsman touch, sir. He can make any ship bow to his will. One thing is, there ain't a soul what's seen him on the seas of late. Boss a boom! Problem solved! Let us scout out this Bobbery fellow and get him on board! As is customary, my captain will handle all navigations. That would be you, Mario. That does sound fair to everyone else, does it not? Then it is decided. You must find us, Bobbery, and bring him here to our fortune sales with you. Oh, we bring him here. Our fortune sales with you. Yeah, we have to find this guy named Bobbery now. Ugh. I know it's been a while, but eh, it hasn't been that long. Um, I'll keep the episode going, you know? So now we have to find this guy named Bobbery. Um, do you know who Bobbery is? Admiral Bobbery? I'm pretty sure that there's an old guy living here by that name in the east part of town. Or by that name who lives here in the east part of town. I said that backwards. East part of town, okay. Hmm. Maybe Frankly knows. I mean, Frankly lives in the east side of town, doesn't he? It was left is west, east is right. Okay. So, frankly, he lives on the east side of town, so maybe frankly knows who this Bobbery fellow is. I mean, he's an old man himself. Maybe they were childhood friends. Maybe? I don't know. Let's go find out. Hello, frankly. Bobbery! That old sea dog lives in the east side house right next door. They say he was a great and important sailor long ago. He lives next door? Okay, let's go. That's super easy, and it's locked from the inside. Uh, okay. Wait a minute. If it's locked from the inside, maybe we can break in this house. Can we actually do that? Wait, there's a star piece up there. Ooh, I'm gonna get that. But first, wait, can we even go in here? Oh, it's you guys. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, I know how to get there. Hold on, let me just skip ahead. Hmm, this is above his house. There's a chimney. Let's go! Oh. Hello. What do you blokes want? Admiral Bobbery! Haven't the faintest idea of what you're talking about. Now, if you please. Please don't insult us. We already know you're Admiral. Just let's admit it. Hmm! What poppycock? Tell me. What would you want from me if I were this chap? You say your ship needs a navigator, and you want me to do the job, hmm? So sorry, but you'll have to look elsewhere. I shall set the sail upon sea nevermore. But maybe you don't understand how important it is. We need you. Without you, we'll never get to Kiyohaki. Ki ki Awfully sorry, dear boy, but when I say no, what I mean is no. Have away with you. You meanie. But you know what? I'm gonna go in here and steal your star piece. Ha! Now I'm gonna leave. You just- what? Whoa. What do you think, Mario? Nothing we say seems to be enough to convince this man. But don't you find it odd? Why would a sailor have such hatred for the sea? We need answers. Maybe we should ask around this town for the man's story. Hmm. Hmm. Frankly? Do you know? Oh, whoa, whoa. Vivian. Admiral Brobbery won't go to sea. That's a setback. Hmm. I don't know the man myself, so I don't know what to tell you, unfortunately. But I'd be willing to bet that... that Podley knows a thing or two. He works at the Inn's Cafe. Podley. He works at the Inn's Cafe. You don't think he means that Bean Bean guy, does he? Oh, okay, let's go to the Bean Bean guy and see if that's Podly. I mean, Pod, like Bean, Pod, two peas in a pod, peas, pea pod? Yeah? Peas are a type of bean? 
Yeah, you get it. I, that, I, I oversaturated that. Anyway, hello! You must be Podly. You say Bobbery won't go to see ya. Huh? Well, I can't say that, that surprises me. The real question is, are you folks really sure you want Bobbery back on the water? Oh, is that it? Now I see. You want a mountain expedition to Keelhaw Key. Rough seas out there. Most sailors would meet their ends. Not old Bobbery, though. The fact of the matter is, Admiral Bobbery's tale is sad. Horribly sad, actually. You'll probably end up crying, but I'll tell it to you if you really want me to. Please do, I can take it. Please do, I can take it. In that case, get ready. Bobbery's tale of woe goes something like this. Bobbery was once married. He had a wife of enduring beauty named Scarlet. The two of them were madly in love, the sort of love reserved for fairy tales. Now Bobbery was a, a renowned sailor, so he was away from home for long periods. Scarlet never complained, though and always waited faithfully for Bobbery's return. And Bobbery, his eye never drifted. He loved only Scarlet, truly and deeply. So they lived and found happiness where they could, and all was good for a time. But not all good things can last. It was a particularly icy winter when it happened. Scarlet fell ill. A virus? A passing cold? No one knew, but it soon turned serious. Bobbery, at sea, on for a long, lonely voyage, knew nothing of his bride's suffering. By the time he returned, Scarlet had succumbed. She was gone. Bobbery, of course, blamed himself. My loving wife perished because of me. If I were not at sea, I could have nursed her to health. I could have saved her! He was so overcome with such thoughts, they tormented him, always haunting his sleeps. He has never gone out to sea since. I can't imagine what that poor man went through. No wonder he won't sail. You all know his tale now. So tell me, do you still want him to return to sea? Yes, we have no choice. Very well, I understand. If you're that determined, then I'll give you this. On her deathbed, Scarlet wrote Bobbery a final letter. You hold it in your hands. I don't know what's written inside, but I can tell you what she told me as she lay dying. If I should succumb to this plague, and if my love shouldn't blame himself for my death, then give this letter to him so he may hear my voice. It was her last request. When I saw Bobbery in misery, trying to forget the pain as he mourned his wife, I just couldn't bring myself to present his letter to him. I've regretted it ever since. Please, take this letter and do the deed I was too cowardly to do. Take it to Bobbery. Thank you so much, Podly. We'll deliver the letter. Don't you worry. Ready, Mario? Yeah, guys, this game... Despite it being a Mario game, it gets pretty dark and serious. Like, that story... I'm not gonna lie, I actually have a little tear going down my eye right now. I know it's it's pretty cliche of me to say, but that... I know I've heard the story tons of times, but like... My god, that's a really heartbreaking story. Like, especially in a Mario game, like, that's like... That's really deep for a Mario game. That's so, like... I feel so bad for this poor guy. And this guy had the letter the whole time, but he never did it. He never returned it. Like, you couldn't just leave it at his doorstep or something. You couldn't. Like, come on, man. Wait a minute. I want Vivian out for this. I know it's stupid, but I want Vivian out for this. Hello. We're back. What? Oh, by Blabberin's beard. Not you again. No matter how many times you entreat me. My stance is firm. Now away with you! Pardon? A letter you say? 
for, for me. What? Scarlet! That's the Scarlet's handwriting! Scarlet, my love. My love, if you're reading this letter, then I am no longer by your side. Because fate has stepped between us, I've decided to write you this letter. If you're reading this, I must have passed away while you were out to sea. I can only assume that you will blame yourself for it, my sweet Bobbery. Although my life was short, you gave me more than a lifetime's worth of joy. Though you will mourn, I beg that you remember that time, like love, is a tide. You are one with the sea, as you are one with me. Do not lose your life's loves. Time, like love, is a tide that you are one with the sea. As you were one with me. A, a thousand pardons. But may I have a moment alone, if you please? Yes, love. I was happy. My sweet, sweet Scarlet. I love you still. Now then, you were looking for a navigator, I believe, bound for Key Low Key. Hmm! If you think an old sea bomb like me is what you need, then let's shove off! Admiral Barbary, wonderful! Oh my god, Barbary, I have so much respect for this character. I feel so bad for him. Like, Admiral Barbary, in terms of characters in this game, he's one of the most developed characters. Like, he honestly, we only just met this guy and we already. Like this! All of this! The ship's in the harbor, hmm? I must inspect it before we leave. I shall meet you there! God, Barbary, I. This episode's been an emotional roller coaster. Oh my god. But you know what? I am actually gonna end it off here because I've been recording for a while 38 minutes in total. Lots of story to cover. So I'm going to save here and end off here. So, as usual, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Paper Mario The Thousand Yard Door. And, if you guys enjoyed the episode, please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, favor, and comment, and tell me. Okay. If that story didn't break your heart, I don't know what will. Like, come on. That story is so hard. Like, if that doesn't break your heart, I don't know what will. Like, you would have to, like, actually be, like, you would actually have to have no emotion to not feel sad by that, even just a little bit. Oh my god, that story just destroys... Oh my god. I feel so bad for Bobbery and Scarlet. But, you know what? It's fine. He's... He sails again. We convinced him. And now, in the next episode, we will sail off to Keel Hall Key. With the help of Admiral Bobbery. With that all said, I hope you all have a great episode. Oh, great episode. Hope you all have a great day. And I will see you in the next episode. See you later, guys. And don't forget to have a great day. I just said it. <laughs>